We as humans love animals. So many of us have pets, ranging from dogs and cats to something more exotic like lizards and birds. But one thing around us is common, and that's how much we adore our pets. At least if we're good pet owners, of course. While we certainly do love them, who says those are the only animals who can be our best friends? Yes, there are several examples of humans and animals sharing strong bonds together. It's never easy to be born a little different. It's one thing if you have something harmless, like a different hair color, or maybe one eye is different from the other. But it can be a very different story if you are Iris Grace. Iris was born with autism, a strain that made it difficult to do many basic things. While her parents are loving and supportive, she still found it very difficult to function properly, often afraid to come out of her comfort zone. Seeing her difficulties, though, her parents decided to bring in some extra help. Enter Thula the Cat. Thula was given to Iris, and everything seemed to change for the little girl. With the introduction of Thula, Iris was suddenly more eager to go for bike rides, walks, as long as she went with Thula. She was doing things she had never really done before, and she was doing them so confidently. Thula really has become Iris' comfort animal, and it's great to see that she's going strong. Dogs truly are amazing. They love us unconditionally, they wag their tails when happy, and they're just so darn cute that sometimes you just want to cuddle them. Ah, uh, I love them. On top of that, dogs are also amazing guards, willing to do what they need to to protect us. And none show that better than Kabang the dog. Kabang was a shepherd mix hailing from the Philippines who was owned by Rudy Bungal. Kabang became a loving member of the family and proved just how much she loved them in December of 2011. On that day, Rudy's daughter and her three-year-old cousin were trying to cross a busy street, not seeing that a motorcycle was coming towards them at a high speed. Kabang acted instantly, slamming herself into the bike and knocking it over, keeping the girl safe, but suffering very severe injuries. Kabang was caught in the front wheel of the motorcycle, which resulted in the bones of her upper snout being absolutely crushed. It's sad, I know, but this story does have a happy ending, as while Rudy decided not to have her euthanized, fundraisers were made to help her get proper help. Kabang lived to the ripe old age of 13 before passing away. She was also honored with an aluminum statue presented in Pasananka. Horses are powerful and hardy animals, often recognized for their grace and beauty. And of course, you can see them widely on farms and racecourses as well. The race course part will be important later on, but for now, let me introduce MJB the horse, a horse owned by one Brianna Carsey. She'd always wanted a horse of her own, so her father did get her one from poor breeding stock. Brianna didn't care about where he came from, she simply loved MJB, coddling him and even felt some sort of parental connection to him. She loved and believed in him so much, she actually started to train him for horse races. Despite coming from poor stock, all the training did bear fruit when he started to win more and more races, showing that with just effort and a little love, anything is possible, especially for a girl on her horse. This is Kifu, who's the silverback in this family. John Aspinall is an animal caretaker as well as a wealthy businessman, having found his wealth through the real estate market. Through his ventures, he runs the John Aspinall Foundation with the goal of breeding gorillas and returning them to the wild. This is a venture that he's been very successful in, releasing several gorillas into the wild and also rehabilitating them. However, there was one gorilla in particular named Quibby who was a special case. Quibby was raised by John until she was five years old and then released into the wild. Five years pass and John tracked Quibby down. Their reunion was very touching. When John arrived, Quibby hooted and made sounds of happiness, rushing in to greet him and hugging him. John introduced her to his family, and Quibby spent the night in his camp. Truly, friends for life. This story thankfully doesn't have a tragic backstory where it brought these two together. It's simply a happy little girl with an equally happy duck who loves his mother. Kylie Brown is a simple girl whose parents brought a duck home one night and the two became inseparable. Her parents tried to keep him in the backyard, but he always found ways to get back by Kylie's side. Eventually, her parents simply slapped a diaper on him and called it good. Kylie fully believes she is the duck's mother. Yep, I'm his mom. And together the two have gone pretty much everywhere together. Soccer matches, sledding, even trick-or-treating. On top of all that, Kylie is working towards getting Snowflake registered as a therapy duck, so she can go and spread the joy to others. I thought it was an engine somewhere or something. That is actually coming from the polar bear. That's coming from her. 
Mark Dumas is a senior animal trainer, and Agui is a friggin' polar bear, the apex predator of the frozen waste. Honestly, most of the time this isn't a good combo, but despite that title, Agui is as gentle as a kitten when it comes to Mark, who treats Agui like a tiny puppy, swimming with her and even living with him in the common house. Let me preface this, this bear could literally kill the man in one bite, and Mark knows this. Despite that though, he still treats Agui the same, and seems like it'll never really change. At least I hope, but it really is heartwarming to see these two play. Chances are you've heard of this story already, but sit down and listen to it again, because it's my video. Simply enough, John and Anthony bought Christian when he was a cub at a department store, and then raised him in their basement. Okay, now I know that sounds like the basis of a horror movie, I, I, I know, but please, stay with me here. I tell you, it has a good happy ending. Rather than becoming a bloodthirsty man-eater, Christian actually did grow up pretty normally. Heck, he was even playing with the local neighborhood children safely. However, despite all that normalcy, his owner started to realize that he would simply get too big to play soon, and also more than likely his wilder instincts would start to kick in, and possibly something bad would happen. With those thoughts in mind, they decided to bring him back to the wild. A bit of time passed, and the two decided to visit their wayward son and see if he remembered them. And you know what? He did! He rushed towards them, snuggling and cuddling them as his owners hugged him back, all the while crying tears of joy. If there's one thing you can take away from this video, those aren't his owners, they're his dad's. Not often you'd find a penguin in the wild, even rarer you develop a lifelong friendship with one. Unless, of course, you're Joel Pereira. Joel found poor Din Din while on one of his standard walks. Seeing that the poor little bird was covered in oil, starving, and pretty much close to death, he decided to do what any good Samaritan and animal lover would do. This amazing man took Din Din and helped nurse him back to health, cleaning him, feeding him, and also just taking care of him back to a healthy state. However, like the sad animal movie it is, the time did come. The time came and the old man did release his friend back in the wild. However, this wasn't the end, as Din Din does come back several times a year to visit the man who saved his life and his best friend, just to show his appreciation for the man is unending. Aight, so I didn't expect this, like at all. This is kind of like the one with the polar bear and Mark Dumas. You don't generally put a living dinosaur with a human and expect it to have a happy ending. You expect this to be on the obituary's paper. Yet somehow, Gilberto managed it. Gilberto is a fisherman who found an injured croc while fishing one day. While most of us would flee at the sight of a croc, whether it's injured, asleep, or not, Gilberto was a bit different. He instead took Pocho back and started to nurse him back to health, taking care of his injuries and feeding him. Once Pocho was back to a healthy state, Gilberto released him back into the river. However, Pocho came back the next day. In fact, Pocho just sort of stayed. He didn't want to leave. Again, this might be a problem for a lot of us, but Gilberto is, again, different. He happily accepted him, and the two became inseparable and even became famous around their home, performing tricks and showing off their bond. You can see several pictures and videos of them online, showing just how deep their bond is, with Gilberto kissing Pocho and Pocho just acting kind of like a puppy sometimes. At least as far as Crocs go. And now it's time for the day's best pick. Today's best pick shows a cute pachyderm with a rather happy woman. I will be honest though, I couldn't find much when I actually looked this up online. I could be wrong, but I don't think there's really a big story behind this one. Couldn't figure out who it was exactly, but I do have another story about a friendship you won't ever forget. Derek is an interesting man. Not only is he the owner of the Save the Elephant Foundation, he's also the best friend to all elephants. But none more so seemingly than Kamla. Kamla was a baby elephant that Derek helped save. Kamla became good friends with her rescuer, becoming quite protective of her small, squishy human. There were reportedly times she actually wouldn't leave his side, and often liked to mess with him, in a friendly way, of course. Looking at some of the pictures, you really can see the bond that they share. Their bond is actually so close that she even rushed in to save Derek when she thought that he was drowning in a lake, but thankfully he was only just swimming. Derek took this in stride, happy to have such a good friend in Kamla. Despite overreacting, it really is heartwarming to see how devoted she is to her human, and I can't wait to see more stories about them. 
And that is our video for today, folks. I do hope you enjoyed it. What was your favorite Bond? Got any different ones in particular? Well, let us know in the comment section down below. And with all that said and done, I will see you all next time. Later, everybody.